Thanks a lot. Can you hear me? It's a really funny thing. Mostly I'm an old white man, but now I'm a dinosaurus, so it's really bad. But now uh, one very good thing is uh, this year I have my 20 year anniversary of using drones, civil drones. I started in 2003 as one of the very first, so, and I'm very glad that, uh, about the development, how much we have achieved and where we are. And so I have the big pleasure to tell you about uh, the AI-based uh, inspection system for automated control of power or pipelines. As you know, we have around in Germany only 120,000 kilometers of pipelines. And with all these problems uh, at the moment, there is really an issue that we uh, control and monitor them. The whole uh, project was funded within the Copernicus content, which is really a very good thing of the European in, um, Union. Now to our company. What do we do? We have very high precision data for... Uh, wait, 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 can I can go back? Yep. We have very high uh, precision data with drones and other remote sensing. And the very good things, we create workflows, really not uh, from the problem to the solution. And we are, um, and we are developing drones. OK. OK. So now we go back to the company. All right. Oh. Copernicus, I said, what, uh, what we are doing. We're providing solutions. Every solution with a geospatial context, we find solutions, we, f we uh, collect the data, we analyze, we make the image extraction, and we trigger action. We, are a, uh, we have a company building very large uh, drones, up to 23 meters. And at the moment, we, are, uh, we have grown. We started four years ago, and now we have 18 people. And we have uh, different segments. Smart farming, they're in vineyards. We are very big in smart forestry, because in Germany, we have a big problem with uh, forest, uh, with bark beetle, and with robotics for the pipeline inspection and power line inspection. And of course, we are developing very powerful VTOLs, and we make sensor integration. The research projects, we have uh, the business, normal business cases, standard workflows, but I'm coming a little bit from the developing side. And so we are uh, erosion and landslides. We have big projects in uh, Georgia, in the high uh, Caucasus regions. Then again, um, with pipeline inspection, power line inspection. That's very interesting. You can see in our, uh, how's it called? You can see here in our, um, Boot. We have a very nice hydrogen fuel cell VTOL with about six to eight hours flight time and eight kilogram payload, so really very interesting stuff. And um, then we make uh, as well, we have the forestry and for uh, 6G, the one which is after 5G, we are setting standards and uh, developing for drone applications. And that will be really a revolution because with the cycling, we have very big data rates we can. Uh, for here are our uh, drones, fleets from the normal copters to the normal VTOLs, then the VTOLs we have as well for the, how is it called? Uh, so, um, the hydrogen fuel cell up to the Antares with 40 hours of flight time. And this gives a lot of options for monitoring forest fire and things in that. The Movavi project, this pipeline inspection, it's us. We have Spleen Lab, this is artificial intelligence, one of the leading in East Germany. Then we have a university, and we have DigPro. DigPro, DigPro is, a, uh, is a company, uh, they make GIS system for power uh, companies. Uh, I think 60% of the European uh, pi pipelines are in this software. And that's really quite good, so our information goes in the GIS, and so we have a seamless integration in the workflows. How is the power, uh, pipeline inspection done till uh, now? We have the power lines, and the people want to know whether they are working or not. And so um, they go with helicopters every month. They fly the pi pipelines, people sitting there, uh, monitoring changes, things like that. Very inefficient, very objective, you know, uh, inobjective. Some people see things, not. 
A helicopter hour is about three and a half thousand euro and we don't have really not a valid data step. And we, our, we itself, we want to fly with drones. We record the data, we make image, ex um, we make image processing, information extraction, and then we can really see changes, we can see hotspots, everything like that. It's really amazing that in the year 2023, most of the pipelines, people look, yeah, there is something or not. It's amazing how uh, uh, not very uh, state of the art they are. And what do we do? We do automatically testing and recording of the linear infrastructures. And we want to be objective, we want to be fast, we want to be cost effective, we want to keep databases and we want to understand all the processes. And uh, all this is done and we want to make a standardized workflow. We, have, we are um, quite strong in Africa and we have a lot of contracts now for power line inspection. And as soon as we have the, um, the new technique, we can upscale it to other countries and other uh, things. So we have different uh, work patterns. On the one hand, we get the information, we get the labeling, we get the uh, detection of the failures and so on. And then we put it uh, in the, we integrate it in the GIS of the, um, of the power line structure. So drones, we're getting the data. Artificial intelligence, extract the data, and then integration in the GIS. So the pipelines are a little bit different. We, we started with the power lines a long years ago, but pipelines have a problem. They are only 1% of the time over the ground. One, uh, 95, uh, um, and so for these which are over the ground, the moving hazards that people run against it are 5%, and environmental impact that somebody falls on it or they get washed under or something are 95%. And then for the 99%, they are under the ground. We have no ground penetrating radar. So we see mobile hazards, that's very little. When a very big excavating machine runs over it, but mostly they are uh, visible changes that people excavate things, they drill wells, there are uh, movements or something in the ground. And so <laughs> we found, uh, we made catalogs of things which happened, which are we are interested. I think it's about three, four hundred criteria. Just one. It's uh, very important is the soil removal stuff that people just excavated. Another thing is that the people uh, drill uh, well for wells for their garden or for the swimming pools. Or uh, we see vegetation, that the vegetation is changing. So when the trees are dying, this can be an indication that the pipeline is broken. Or uh, for other things as well, uh, in, in winter for water pipelines, when uh, in, in frost, because the water is warmer, you see very, um, very characteristic, characteristic, characteristic patterns. And now we're doing automatically analysis and we want to do it on board. We have an NDVI card track. So when there is something, it will be detected, it will be extracted, and it will be compared with the uh, where it's labeled. And then, and this is a very important thing, we have probabilities, whether how, pro, uh, uh, how we, with which probability this is it. And when we are don't have the uh, uh, when we don't have the probability, hang on. Uh, we fly on the one uh, way up normally, and then we fly the way back from a different angel in a lower, in a low, uh, in a lower in high height. And so there's this, then we have every object of different angles and different things. This helps a lot for the object um, um, recognition. And this is the capturing process. We have a video camera, and then automatically high resolution images were taken and they are linked to it. So, and the next one, as soon as they come, now we see here the marker posts, the staircases, things like that. Is it allowed, is it not, is there some changes? Then in the next image, bam, 
we get as well high resolution from the way back from thing. We make 3D models as well for the object cars. You can detect that with quite easily. We see the uh, vehicles in the in the uh, way like that. Next one, and as well, we are trying to do sensor fusion. We have multispectral cameras to see vegetation. We have lidar for getting the objects. And here is so we get suspicious new planting. So when some farmers try to build up uh, new, new uh, trees with deep uh, roots, they may be a threat. Or here, this is uh, washing. This is one of the biggest issues we have in Germany, that, uh, that the soil is washed away. So I want to make it short because you, oh, the beer is waiting. We have a boot in the room 5.2, and I really would discuss a lot because in the whole field, there's so much bullshit on the road. I know some providers who are doing it and say they have AI, and I know that they send the video streams to India, and the people there, there are hundreds of people, just visual interpretation, which is not bad. It's a good method, but it's not AI. And, but what, what is our lesson learned? So the uh, inspection of under uh, pipelines underground are completely different, like the uh, obvious, like the power lines. So a lot of people which have power lines want to go to uh, pipelines, and they face issues. This and the biggest challenge is that we detect the changes on the soil surface, which are indicators of broken pipelines or damages in the pipelines. The biggest thing for the AI, and there we have really so much bad experience, was the training. And which is, AI is very perfect when you have uh, proper light conditions, when you have the geometry, but in nature, everything, you have a lot of degrees of freedom. When there's a little bit snow on there, when there are leaves there, when there's litter laying, when there is uh, some uh, different even colors. And this really creates a lot of issues, and we are now much further than two years ago when we started, but we are long, not, uh, we have a long way to go before we get really this absolutely 90, 95% we need. And uh, which is a very good idea what we did is that we, that we work with the detection that we get the probabilities. And so we say this is quite sure, so we, we don't have to do. And then the other thing where we don't know, then we can go fly deeper or some, some uh, operator has to look at it. And with this, we can reduce the quite cost and efficiency uh, work of the labors by far. And which was very nice uh, experience, the long range drone we have, that's really a very good tool because on the one hand we have for, uh, a four to six hours flight time and on the, on the other time we can interrupt all the time and can hover and we have still a long of, uh, for detailed inspection and we have still a long way to go. I thank you very much. I think this was the, yeah. If, I, if you have any questions, I'm very happy to discuss it at the booth or with a beer or whatever. And I really would like, when somebody has good ideas, when somebody is further than us, please approach me. For me, that I'm, I'm working now 20 years with drones and I'm very, very frustrated that things I have did, uh, I did 2008 in Australia, like irrigation control with drones. Still, it's not standard, yeah. All this bark beetle detection, it's possible, but, it's, but the, the problem is the companies are too small and so they don't have the time to make proper testing and the big companies or like DLR or something like that, they are not efficient, they have so much, they are not moving. And I think very much when we are getting together, the people and we, when, when the, the one case, can this do this, then we get much further for the benefit of all. Thanks a lot.